queens, we deserve to have it all in every area of our lives. So let's raise our standards together and let's be honest with ourselves. Yes, we desire to have great bodies. Yes, we desire to have great romantic love. Yes, we desire to have great lifestyles. Like we are the kinds of women that I'm saying at the beginning, like we desire to have it all. You've gotten great at divine working, but what about divine living? Welcome to the Divine Living Podcast. I'm your host, Gina DeVee. You're not alone in wanting more. And here at the Divine Living Podcast, you can expect to be part of conversations from women like us who unapologetically dream big and are obsessed with manifesting our most fabulous lives. The conversation starts now. What is up, Divine Living Queens? I'm so, so looking forward to being here with you today on a subject that I think is very dear to many of us. And it's not something I talk a lot about at the Divine Living anything, quite frankly. However, something that I am thrilled about is that Joanne LeMay wrote in, and she is the inspiration for today's podcast subject. So I want you to pay attention to this one because I think you're going to love it. And also want to let you know that if you have an idea for a subject you would like me to discuss, please definitely DM us, write us here at Divine Living. You can send an email to questions at divineliving.com because I love for this conversation to be intimate, to be close, to be relevant, and to be what's on forefront of all of our minds. So here's what was written in. Way to go. The podcast is amazing. I would love to hear more on Gina's wellness journey, aka lose weight like a queen. I think there's a lot of us out there that could use that queenly guidance, hashtag COVID-15. Well, Joanne, you sent this email in right as I was getting ready to sit down and I just started to pray and said, dear God, what should I talk about today? And clearly you are the angel messenger for this subject. So let's everyone, let's just, I'm going to set my glasses down. I'm going to have a sip of tea. Actually, it is detox tea and we're going to dive into this. But first let's start with a prayer. Dear God, in this moment, we remember how loved we are. We remember that today we get to begin again. We open ourselves up to your divine guidance, your spirit of health, inspiration. And we just ask that you guide us all into taking great care of our bodies, in loving ourselves and our bodies, and in really letting these physical vessels be a temple in which they are. And we pray this believing. Amen. Okay. So as I record this episode, we are at the tail end of 2020, maybe not the telltale end. It's October, 2020. And I set out for myself three goals this year. And one of them was to be body transformation. I've never had like a serious body image issue or weight struggle of any sort, but I kind of did the put two pounds on a year for 15 years. And then all of a sudden you find you got 20 to 30 extra pounds on you and you're like, what is up and whose body is this? So that's my personal journey with it. And I just let myself kind of get used to the chub, if you will. And I'm not like a, this is not a self-depreciating moment. This is just for me personally, I, got myself used to having a little uh, little extra skin on the bones, not feeling as awesome in clothes as I would like, not feeling as physically just, I always have a lot of energy, but just not as physically together. Anywho. So January, 2020, I set three goals out for myself. And one of them was, you know, I've transformed so many areas in my life, money story, man story, et cetera. But I've never had like a real physical body transformation. So I was like, let's do it. And I wrote about this in my book. I've had like different stops and starts at different junctures. Usually I get motivated in the spring right before I'm about to go to Europe for the summer. 
And I've worked with, shared uh, Dr. Prudence Hall of the Hall Center in Santa Monica. And she's been amazing at, you know, making sure my hormones are balanced so that any efforts I do put into weight loss actually work. Well, anyways, I started this year in January because I knew my book was coming out in March and I would be on this big global book tour and on all these stages and wanted to look and feel amazing. Plus, it was part of my goal for one of my goals for the year. Oh, I actually forgot about this. And let's let's be honest here, shall we? Also, a girlfriend of mine invited me on a bigger girls trip to Bali. I think we we're all supposed to go. Was it March or April? I forget now. So truth be told, that might have even been the bigger motivation. And so I'm like, I am going to be bikini ready in Bali. So I set out on my journey in January and it went great. January and February, I'm like shredding the pounds. I was working out at my gym. I was working out with a personal trainer. And I'll share some of the other things that, that I did kind of food wise, nutrition wise, et cetera. And honestly, like my body was just shrinking and toning and it wasn't full of deprivation and it felt great. I think I did like a, if I remember correctly, about a two, maybe three week, like super clean cleanse, like no alcohol, sugar, dairy, wheat, etc., cetera, um, to give my body like a real kickstart. And then after that, I finally found what was working for me, which I'll share later. But what I want this to be is exciting and interesting for every woman, no matter where you're at on your own journey. So I'll get into the details later. But I think that the queenly conversation that I want to have right now is we get to have it all. And I think that there's so many areas in our life where we've, you know, we're really going for it and we're like, okay, I'm going to transform this area and I'm going to do that. I'm going to let myself receive. And then there's other areas, whether it's your marriage or, or your body or motherhood or career or money or whatever it is where we say it's okay. It's okay. And the truth is, I don't know any woman who doesn't want to have the best in every single area of her life. Like, like I don't, I've never met that woman. Those women are not in the divine living community. It's probably not you either. And we're not like, you know what? I'm like, really, I'm going for having a great body, but I'm really okay if my relationship is just okay. Or, you know, I'm really going for having this meaningful career, but I'm really okay if I'm like, kind of struggling financially. Like this is not who we are as queens. And yet I think society has just so taught us to play it down and play it safe and not be too much or just be happy with what we have. So it's like, if in my case, I have a great career and a great relationship, like, you know, it's okay if I don't have like, you know, a completely rocking body as well. And I think that one of the cool things about being a woman entrepreneur is that we get to wake up to so much stuff. Right? I always say, if you want the best personal development seminar on the planet, start your own business because you get this opportunity to really go for it. And, and there's no ceiling in entrepreneurialism. There's no, no one stopping you, but you, and you get that once you're in the, the conversation, the community, you get like, there's no one to blame. They're not even yourself. And there's just every opportunity to seize. And we know that thoughts are things. We know that we have the power to create our own reality. We know that in the, the quantum field, there are zero limits that we can be, do, and have anything we want. And so we start going for it, right? And we start, we get that first team member. We start, get that first client. We start making that first amount of money, or maybe pay off that debt and start taking those trips and upgrade the wardrobe and for some people, then the next step is like attracting the soulmate and love into your life or getting rid of the toxic relationship, whatever the transformations are. And I know that for me, when I'm really focused, I'm like all in, I'll go for one area and then the next and the next. And so I did my personal development, family of origin work. And I did my, and not that I'm not on the journey in every category I'm about to mention, by the way, I'm just not in the excruciating pain where I was with my own family, with my own finances, with my own calling and my own soulmate and man dynamics. Then there was clients and there was team, you know, like there was so much transformation that we women entrepreneurs take on. And so can we just stop for a moment and listen to that list? It's like, 
And I didn't even mention motherhood or bodies or being feminine or spiritual in that like this. There's just, I think that we have so much to be proud of for who we have become, what we have learned, what we have accomplished. And I know, I know this camp and I know we're not thinking about that. We're thinking about everything we haven't done, everything we have yet to do, how disappointed we are in ourselves. I was a talking to one of my favorite clients earlier today. And she just did a launch for her business and she made $50,000 in the launch. And she was so disappointed. She was so disappointed. She'd have five day challenge and made 50,000. And she was like mad at herself because the numbers weren't more or bigger. And we'll call her Jane. I was like, Jane, I am thrilled for you that you have the level of financial goals that you have. And I know that you have a certain level of financial responsibility as well, which is where some of this was coming from. But can we just take a look at what you have accomplished? You made $50,000 doing a five-day launch. And she's like, well, all right. So all of this to say, whatever you have accomplished, I think needs honored and mentioned and integrated. And I think as we start to get into this body conversation, our bodies, they've held it all. They've carried it all. Every thought, every vibration, every emotion, feeling like food morsel, feeling tired, feeling hungry, feeling overstuffed, like like any of it, our bodies have been through it all with us. And they've also been through this pandemic. I mean, I remember how my body first felt. It was like, I didn't let it get too far, but it was like, it was like, is the sky falling here? Like, are we getting like consumed in this apocalyptic like vortex? And it's like, my body took that in. It took in some fear. It took in some what like some anxiety. It took in some depression. It took in disappointment when we ended up canceling the book tour and that trip to Bali, by the way. Oh, shall I mention now that we're there? You know, I think I had lost about 12 or 15 pounds between January and March. So I was in like some, for me, better shape than I had been in probably a decade and was feeling good in clothes, not quite the bikini yet, but feeling good in clothes. Anyways, so, but the body took in that disappointment of like what I thought this year was going to be wasn't. And so I want you to just reflect for yourself. You know, I can't imagine that you haven't pivoted also. I can't imagine that there hasn't been heaviness that you've held. I can't imagine that you haven't been like taking into the cells of your body and asking the deeper questions like, what am I doing or what am I doing this for? And who am I doing it? Like, and like, what am I doing with my life? Like the body takes it all in. And then in my case, the body also took in complete permission to have adult camp here at Divine Living Headquarters. Yes, it was Taco Tuesday and Pizza Wednesday and it'd be six o'clock and Glenn would be like, do you want a cocktail? And I'd be like, does today end in why? I mean, it was like, it was like the, one of the ways I let myself temporarily self-soothe during this, well, I can't go out and I can't do this and I can't do that, but I can enjoy a Cosmo and I can order in Chinese and I can add ice cream to it, I guess, if I want to as well. So I got off my big reason for doing this in the first place. The Bali trip was canceled and the onstage appearances were canceled. And so I was like, well, let's order some cashmere tracksuits and and snuggle in. And so I did. And I packed on not all of the weight back, but a significant amount. And I will say, you know, for a while it actually was pleasurable. I'm, you know, I'm not even going to make myself wrong. I certainly didn't beat myself up over it. I was very conscious in, in the process that I just enjoyed, I enjoyed being home with Glenn and I enjoyed cooking this delicious food that wasn't necessarily on program and low calorie. And I did, you know, I didn't follow one of my queenly qualities, which is a queen follows a no excuses policy. And I definitely let myself have the excuse of, I'm not going to work out. 
I had gotten into this really cool rhythm of going to the gym and working out with my personal trainer and doing the yoga classes at the gym. And I could have taken myself for a jog. I could have done virtual workouts and I didn't during that time. So that's probably, that one I, I, I regret a bit more because I'd done a lot of work to get myself in a certain amount of shape and I could have kept it going. And I think that's one of the things, well, I'll talk about that more later, but it's when you have the habits, it doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing. Anywho, packed on probably 10 of the 15 pounds I had lost. And at a certain point, I think when I realized like, wow, this isn't going to be changing significantly anytime soon, I had the desire to get it together and I had had just enough pizza and tacos, et cetera. So... I think it was around August, I started getting back on the wagon and slowly, you know, I just started moving my body and I did hire a personal trainer and, um, was not, had no need to be an overachiever in that process. And, you know, let myself slowly work up to a pretty good place. And then it was sort of like a a perfect storm, I think. So what happened was, My trainer decided she didn't want to do training anymore. So she, that was basically done. I had a really painful cycle for my period and I was like not feeling like working out. And then the week after that, I went to Mexico. And so then there was that. So like no trainer, two weeks off of like not being on a treadmill And then there were the margaritas and the tacos again. So fortunately, I actually didn't gain that much weight. I just got out of shape. All of this to say, you asked what my, my, my personal journey was here, Joanne. And so that's, that brings us to October. And this is where I am at in October. And this is the power of being a queen because a queen always has the opportunity to begin again. Every day is a new day. And I'm proud of myself that I have made the decision to not wait until January and not put my goals and dreams off any longer. And the day after I got back from Mexico, got back into it and got back on the treadmill. And again, I'm easing myself into it. I'm not like punishing myself on the treadmill. And I am going to look into some online workout programs. So I would love to get any uh, comments or DMs and suggestions if there's any virtual uh, training programs that that any of you like. Um, So I'll be exploring that. So right now for me, it's going back to what worked for me. And what worked for me at the beginning, it was so drama free. It was so like, it was a commitment. It was a decision. And I will absolutely admit I have very, I had goals that I want to look good in a bikini. I'm just be straight up with you. Like I'm, I'm thrilled that that process will actually have some health side benefits. But you know, if people ask me like how I do things, I'm driven by desire. My birthday is December 22nd. And my husband and I are going to be in a tropical location at that time. And I haven't felt awesome in a bikini in quite some time. And that is a birthday gift that I decided to give to me. And I know I could choose to feel awesome in a bikini right now, um, that that's a choice too. And I choose to feel awesome in a bikini when for me, I look more awesome in a bikini. So what my process looks like with that is number one, I drop the drama. Just it's it's a decision. Weight loss, unless there's some sort of genuine medical condition going on, does not deserve the time, attention, and particularly drama that we give to it. So I've decided to drop the drama, number one. Number two, I fortunately, you know, I've tried a few different things throughout the years to like, you know, once I've put on 10 or 20 pounds to get rid of it and lose it. And I've done different diets and, and here and there, nothing super neurotic and just things that were like more more or less pleasurable. So for me, what I have found works for me is working out in the morning, nothing crazy, usually about an hour, a little bit of cardio, and then some resistance training is what my body responds to. And then I do intermittent fasting. So I drink, well, I always have coffee with me, but that's just in the morning. I I do coffee in the morning and then I drink a lot of water, a lot of water with lemon, a lot of detox teas, a lot of herbal teas, 
and I'm just really flushing my body throughout the day. And then if I need to, I'll snack on, you know, maybe a piece of a clean piece of protein, maybe cucumber sticks, maybe some almonds, but typically not. Maybe an almond milk latte. Uh, once I get into the groove, I don't really think about it. And I just, plus I love the results. So I do intermittent fasting during the day. And then after typically somewhere around a two week, I'll do a two week, like super just clean, like I talked about before, cutting out wheat and dairy and alcohol and sugar and, and that sort of thing. And But then after that, I pretty much relatively and mindfully speaking, eat whatever I want for dinner. So we'll have like some sort of lovely appetizer. For the most part, it will be vegetables and protein, but I won't at that point go crazy because if I'm working out in the morning and I'm drinking lots of fluids throughout the day and I'm doing intermittent fasting, then, you know, you can imagine proportionally somewhat eat whatever I want and still lose the weight. So that's, that's my groove. That's my decision. That's my focus. And I think the, that's the tactical pieces. And like, even in business, the nuts and bolts pieces are never the thing. My, my friend Jill Stanton, like she's so obsessed with the inner game. Uh, but it is, it really is that it's just, you can relax in the decision. You can relax in the decision that I am gifting myself for me, the experience of looking and feeling great in a bikini by the time it's my birthday. And I'm not letting up on it. And I'm going to do what it takes to see this through. I'm probably more confident than ever because I am also, sadly for me and my team and my husband at times, the queen of the last minute. I've got a little less than three months left. And I know that in three months of concentrated time, here's what I know for sure. I can create some serious transformation in that amount of time. I also don't have any wiggle room. And that's good for me. Like I do that with work. I did it with writing the book. I I do it with all kinds of things. And now I'm doing it with my body. So it's like, this is going to be a very focused effort for relatively speaking, a short amount of time to get a really big result that I'm super excited about. And I find ways to make it really, really pleasurable. You know, in the morning when I'm on the treadmill, I'm listening to audiobooks that I love. When I am, you know, rather than a happy hour being a glass of Chardonnay, I'm like on either the real real or moda operandi or Netta Porter, and I'm picking out some cute little outfit that I'm gonna love wearing. And then also, you know, I had some fun ordering like beautiful new cookbooks. And it's like, I remember when I I did a diet in the past that the doctor said, don't focus on the stuff that you can't eat, focus on what you can. And there's so many beautiful, glorious foods that are great for our bodies, no matter what your body type is, that we can have fun with. And I think that's what being a queen is, is really all about, getting into divine living. Now, I know some of you, you might just be functional eaters. You don't really care what it is. It's just like you just eat just to exist, you know, because it's just not your thing. That is not my thing. I am lit up about tasting new flavors and trying new recipes and really making this fun. And yes, you know, it's a little more of a challenge for me, but it's divine and delightful. Like I've been having fun with ceviches and just all different kinds of very bikini friendly foods that I didn't normally make and they weren't on our regular recipe rotation, but we're really having fun with it. And I feel great. And most importantly, I'm being true to me. I told myself that I would give myself the gift of transforming my body this year. And I fell off the wagon and I get it and it's fine. And I could still create the excuses and say it's too late and I'll start next year. It just doesn't feel good to me. Like I'm seizing this time. And then when you take a look at it, at least for me, and I am obviously not a doctor and I'm obviously not giving medical advice and I am obviously not telling you that this is what you should do. What I'm suggesting is that you find what works for you. I found that when I got my hormones balanced so that my body could be properly functioning, And I found that a certain amount of working out, intermittent fasting, and having some fun with clean-ish food 
has my body reshaping, has me still in pleasure and, and choosing to enjoy the process. Now I'll totally admit like creating new habits, they're, I don't, they're not fun for most people and they're definitely not fun for me. And so it really is a choice. Like I wake up and I get to be thankful that I have legs to even get on the treadmill. And, you know, anytime I want to be like, I don't feel like doing this. You know, I look at my friend, Amy Purdy, who is like such an inspiration for those of you who know her. She's a three-time Olympic champion who does it with out full legs. I mean, she's, she's incredible and amazing and she's on her own journey and has so much, I mean, light and gratitude and and resilience and, and all of it. And so like, yes, I can, I can wake up and set that alarm and be part of the 5 a.m. club. So I have time to read and journal in the morning to take care of my emotional well being, which is um, not usually a struggle for me. Same with the spiritual well being. And the physical piece, it's it's a definite choice. I have to make it a priority. I have to make it a priority to make sure that I'm taking all my nutritional vitamins and supplements at night when I'm having dinner. It's just a new habit. But when you create the new habit, it's like it feels so, so good. So I'm, I'm less shaped than I was earlier. And I just remember how great it felt putting on certain pairs of jeans and, and certain sweaters that were a little more form fitting. And I choose to give that to myself. I remember years ago in one of my like, I'm going to get skinny modes. I bought a, a Tracy Anderson DVD situation and that in and of itself did not work out so well for me, but I'll t- she said one thing and it stuck with me. And she said, every woman deserves to have a body that she loves. And I was like, you know what? It's not that I don't love my body, but I, I say that to women all the time around business. Like you deserve to have a business that you love and clients that you love or a business model that you love. And I'm like so into it. And do I love my body? I think I appreciate my body. I don't dislike it. I haven't gotten it into the shape where I'm like, yes, this is me. This is the real me. This is the true me. And maybe some of you have done this with your body, but you haven't done it with your business. You're like, you know, I kind of am making some money and I kind of know what I'm doing, but like you're super physically in shape. And I think all of this to say is to say, queens, we deserve to have it all in every area of our lives. So let's raise our standards together. Let's really take a look at, and let's be honest with ourselves. Yes, we desire to have great money. (laughs) That too. Yes, we desire to have great money. I was going to say, yes, we desire to have great bodies. Yes, we desire to have great romantic love. Yes, we desire to have great lifestyles. Like we are the kinds of women that I'm saying at the beginning, like we desire to have it all. So particularly for me and apparently Joanne, in her hashtag COVID-15, and uh, let's lose weight like a queen. And when a queen does it, she gets herself the support. She drops the drama. She prioritizes herself, creates new habits, drops any excuses, and it really lets us be the women that we came here to be. You know, I don't know any spiritual scripture from any text that says, you know, it's okay for you to succeed in this area, but you can only go so far in that area and you're definitely not meant to have it all in that area. That is not spiritual. It is not who we are. It's not what we're about. It's not what we came from. So give yourself the gift of if you've put on a few pounds either during 2020 or at any time in your life and you want to give yourself the gift of getting into the body that feels authentically you. It's probably not the, you're not like, wow, Gina, what a great idea. I've never thought about it. And I've never even tried to do that. Let me do that now. Of course, you've thought about it. Of course, you've tried it before. Like all of us this time, let's, let's go the Yoda route. There is no try there's do or not do. And the best way I have found to create epic success, like the true transformation, it yes, it starts with a decision. It starts with a decision, and a decision means to cut. 
you making the decision that you are doing this no matter what. Now, it gets a lot easier to make that decision when you realize two things, that you can get spiritual and physical support. So understanding that you making this decision, that comes from yourself and your soul and your free will. When you make that decision, you get to pray and don't use prayer as a last resort. Use it as a first resort, like we did at the beginning of this episode, and ask to be spiritually guided. I remember. So at the time of this recording, I just got back from Mexico last night. And last night was like the last hurrah. So there was a pizza ordered. Yes. And today I made the decision. I'm like, back to the detox teas and back to working out and back to a clean dinner tonight. There was pizza left over, people. That's right. And uh, we have Glenn's nephew staying with us for a little bit. He's a 22-year-old dude who eats cold pizza for breakfast. I Look, at I'm a 47-year-old woman. I almost fought for that pizza for breakfast. But so I, I walked by to go get my next cup of detox tea and I saw it sitting there on the counter and I was like, okay, I'm sure that's his. Gina, keep walking. Gina, keep walking. Gina, keep walking. And I came down like 20 minutes later and it was still there. I'm like, is this some sort of test? Is someone trying to tease me? And I was like, whoever's pizza this is needs to come and get it now. So I made a decision and I could have gone for the pizza because there was more than that slice. And I went gratefully for my detox tea. And I, and I kept my ultimate desire in mind to number one, be true to myself. I made a decision. I'm going to transform this body. And then yes, be thinking and feeling how great I'm going to feel in that bikini because I kept my word to myself, because I allowed for transformation in this area of my life. And that's what I want for you. I want you to allow the transformation and it will, the point is, so you're going to ask for the spiritual support. And the only, the only reason I was able to turn away from that piece of pizza was because I got up this morning and I read my spiritual books and I prayed and I asked for support. I, especially these first two weeks, they're not going to be easy for me, but I'm just not going to make them overly difficult either. And I don't want you to either. So there's the spiritual support and then there's the actual physical support. Like if you have what it takes to do it on your own, great. And right now I'm doing the treadmill and the online workouts. The day, the one day, if I don't do both of those, I will be hiring a personal trainer again. I will find that trainer and I will hire that person. So make sure that you're getting yourself the support, whether it's a walking buddy, if you need to make an appointment with an integrative medicine doctor, like, you know, you get whatever support that you need because you deserve that. And you do not have to be in this alone. But I want you to have whatever those goals are for you and pick out a new outfit or the new outfits and, and set your, set your eyes on you having everything in your life that is an exquisite representation of you. That's what you deserve. And that's really what this is about. And it's not about being skinny or overweight based on anyone else's standards. This is about how do you feel in your body? What do you desire? And if you could lose weight the pleasurable way, what would that look like to you? What what would that process be? And I'm going to close with this. That's a hint. Get great at receiving. This is the way of the feminine. This is why, for me personally, I'm not in some 5 a.m. boot camp with anybody yelling at me and screaming at me, and I'm not lifting any kind of military equipment and any of that. It's just that's not, it doesn't feel good to me and my soul and my femininity and my body. But if that does for you and you're energized by that and lit up by that, then you great, you go do you. But the thing about getting great at receiving is receiving our good, receiving what comes natural to us. It's like receiving how good are you going to let life get? I admit, I, at this point in my life, I've got a really great life with my husband, with my team, with my clients, with my lifestyle. And it's like, wow, like to let myself have 
even more pleasure, even, even more abundance in the form of an even healthier physical body. So yes, I'm saying yes to that today. I'd love to hear what your goals are, how this conversation landed in your heart, what you plan on doing with your physical well-being, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe take a, a screenshot of this episode and let me know what your biggest takeaway is from today. Uh, tag me on Instagram. I would really love to hear. It's an important conversation for us women. And there's no body shaming. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You know, we're all going to keep the vibes high because I know how triggering this can be for some people. And the, the biggest message is you have what it takes. If you are on a weight loss journey, thanks to our lovely angel messenger here, Joanne, who wrote in, she wanted how to lose weight like a queen. So Joanne, this one is dedicated to you. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for um, just being vulnerable enough to, to share what you shared in your email. And uh, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. And I want to see you tagging me in those DMs and let me know what you got from today's episode. Lots of love. All right, my beautiful. I hope that you have loved this episode and it has been a blessing in your life. And if you could use a little extra love and support in sisterhood, I want to invite you to join me in my global community in the Audacity to be Queen free companion course. This is completely free. And when you go to divineliving.com forward slash audacity, you're going to get meditations. You're going to get videos. You're going to get workbooks. You're going to get Q&A call replays with me. It's just a whole bunch of positive programming completely for free. I want to make sure that you have this love in your life. So go get it now at divineliving.com forward slash audacity.